Good morning to each one of y'all. Uh, it's good to be here. And I thought about uh, what I would like to share this morning. Um, this is the, the first Sunday of the new year, and uh, so my mind was maybe going down that path a little bit. Um, what are we, we talk some about what do we want to accomplish this year, uh, maybe in our, in our men's discipleship group. Um, what is important we put our energy into? And to accomplish things, we have to have um, a certain level of uh, self-discipline, self-control, um, whatever you want to call it there. And so I'd, I'd like to talk about that this morning. Um, we titled the message here, The Way of Discipline. Um, so it kind, of, kind of what I would like us to learn and Maybe it's maybe a lot of this is things that we know, but, but maybe just need to hear it again. Um, but basically, just just the what, why, and how of discipline, um, what it should look like in our lives, maybe, and, and also like why why is it important for us as Christians? Um, so that's kind of what what I'd like to talk about this morning. Um, but before we get into it, let's have a word of prayer. Father, we thank you for your love to us, thank you for a day that we can worship you uh, together like this. And I just ask now that you would guide us, lead us this morning, <coughs> help me to convey the thoughts that you've laid on my heart, and help us to all learn and grow together. Lord, we commit this, the rest of this service to you, in Jesus' name, amen. Okay, I have a story I would like to read to start with. Um, this is going back to the, the um, source of wisdom from Aesop, uh, one of his fables. Um, so this is, I think there's various versions. This might not be the exact one that would be word for word how he wrote it, but it's, it's the story. Um, so, so listen in here. One warm, sunny day, a grasshopper was bounding through the fields. He was happy and sang a song as he jumped. As he got tired, he decided to lay down on the warm rocks in the sunshine and watch the clouds. <clears throat> Just then, an ant passed by, working very hard to carry an ear of corn to its nest. The grasshopper was so enjoying his day that he called out to the ant, Hey, why are you working so hard? It's a beautiful day. Come enjoy the sunshine with me. The ant called back, We need to store food for the winter. In not so many days, it will be cold we will be hungry. The grasshopper thought that was silly. Why, there's plenty of food, he cried. He went back to lazing in the sunshine. The ant shook his head and went back to work. The next day, it was again sunny, and the grasshopper decided to visit the riverside. He bounded from leaf to leaf over the crisp, cool water, not a care in the world. Once again, he saw the ant pass by. This time, the ant was carrying a large leaf. The grasshopper called out again, hello, friend. Why are you working so hard again today? Come, sit in the shade and enjoy the sound of the river. Once again, the ant refused. These pretty days are not so many, grasshopper. Soon the cold will come. We must be ready. The ant returned to his work. On the third day, when the grasshopper <coughs> woke, the sun was not shining. It was not warm. Winter had come overnight, and the ground was frozen and covered with snow. The grasshopper shivered, and as he looked for food to eat, he found nothing. He walked for hours through the snow, searching for food and shelter. As he walked, he passed the ant's nest. Inside, he saw ants warm and happy, sharing a delicious-looking meal. It was then that he understood that the ant was right all along. Not all days are sunny. I would like to read a passage now from 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians chapter 9. You have to turn there. First Corinthians 9, verse, starting verse 24, reading through the end of the chapter, and this will be, I'll be reading in the New Living Translation. <coughs> First Corinthians 9, verse 24. Don't you realize that in a race everyone runs, but only one person gets the prize, so run to win. All athletes are disciplined in their training. They do it to win a prize that will fade away, but we do it for an eternal prize. So I run with purpose in every step. 
I'm not just shadow boxing. I've disciplined my body like an athlete, training it to do what it should. Otherwise, I fear that after preaching to others, I myself might be disqualified. <laughs> I'd like to read also an excerpt from a book. It's called um, Discipline Equals Freedom. I'll read from the chapter, or it's a small chapter called The Way of Discipline. It says, people look for the shortcut, the hack. The shortcut is a lie. The hack doesn't get you there. And if you want to take the easy road, it won't take you where you want to be. To reach goals and overcome obstacles and become the best version of you possible will not happen by itself. It will not happen cutting corners, taking shortcuts, or looking for the easy way. There is no easy way. There is only hard work, late nights, early mornings, practice, rehearsal, repetition, study, sweat, blood, toil, frustration, and discipline. Discipline. There must be discipline. Discipline, the root of all good qualities, the driver of daily execution, the core principle that overcomes laziness and lethargy and excuses. Discipline defeats the infinite excuses that say, not today, not now, I need rest, I will do it tomorrow. Um, that's again the book, uh, Discipline Equals Freedom. That's written by a um, Navy SEAL commander. Um, and I think we can, we can actually learn a lot from the military in a sense we don't agree with maybe everything that they, that they stand for as far as with non-resistance, but, but we are called to be soldiers and, and I think that we can learn a lot from their philosophies. Um, so, so discipline, um, the definition, I just I looked it up. Uh, in Webster, it says correction or regulation of oneself for the sake of improvement. And that, that's the definition of self-discipline. I'm going to be using the word discipline, and, and there's kind of a couple different meanings. Uh, but specifically, it's, well, the way I'm using it is talking about self-discipline or self-control, uh, basically. Um, so when you think of self-discipline or self-control, what, what do you think of? Um, what does it look like to you? So, so how, how do people use it as a good thing in their lives? Or, or say, like, hey, that person is really disciplined, um, or that person is really undisciplined. Let's, let's have a few examples, just, just simple things, um, either positive or negative. What would you say are ways that, that you see that? A uh, uh, brother that did our marriage counseling, well, not marriage counseling, he did... He, he was a school bus driver, and every morning he actually clocked in at a certain minute and second. And people knew him to be a very dependable person. He was careful about it, so this is an example of good discipline and good testimony because of it. Okay. All right, so that was a positive thing. Something <coughs> Negative would be, you know, just sleeping, slumbering, you know, all hours of the... Morning until morning. 11. Yeah, mm -hmm. or something like that. So is, is discipline um, good or bad? I don't actually, I think it's probably <coughs> neither. Um, there's, there's a lot of, we might call them almost evil people that live a very disciplined life um, to, to reach their goals or, or maybe somebody that's they're driven by making money. You know, they're, to be very successful, you're going to have to be pretty disciplined, and that doesn't necessarily mean you live a godly life. So, and I want us to understand that that discipline is not. I think it's a tool. It's, it's a, a way of training ourselves. Um, so, yeah, we might ask, yeah, what does what does discipline have to do with uh, Jesus' teachings? Is it? I don't ever really remember him saying things like, blessed are the disciplined for they shall achieve greatness or something. Uh, he didn't really talk about that, but I think he lived it um, when we look at his life. Um, something else that's, that's interesting too there, I, I think um, it, is, it is really important. The, the first thing is um, the word disciple actually Disciple, discipline, very, very similar words. But the word disciple comes from the Latin word. Um, I think you 
pronounce it disciplus, um, and that was um, that was the, the person that put himself under the training of another, and then the training from that teacher was called disciplina, um, or or the R word dis discipline. Um, it would basically the the disciplina was the, the process of training that happened with this this person, this disciple. Um, it's kind of kind of interesting. Jesus trained his disciples, uh, and then I would also suggest number two that discipline equals obedience in a sense. So I would say they are very very closely related words. Um, and I'll try to try to explain that some more. But both both discipline and obedience take a choice, and that both of them are not necessarily things that just come naturally. Um, Jesus called to love our enemies. Um, it, it's not, sometimes it takes a choice. Like, I'm going to love this person despite what he did, what he did to me. Discipline, I'm going to get up when my alarm clock goes even though I'm tired and I feel like I need 30 more minutes of sleep. Uh, so, so there's something to keep in mind there. So the, that's maybe kind of the what of discipline. So moving on here to the why. Um, why? Why is discipline important? Why do you think you should have discipline? Why? Why follow God? Um, you know, why are we doing these things? Um, if we don't have a strong why, we're going to be uh, fairly, fairly mediocre Christians. Um, we're not going to be super successful at what God has called us to be. Um, you have to have a strong why, otherwise, yeah, you'll be mildly to not, to not at all successful in what you set out to do. Um, so, so I just, I think of a person that, um, so, so to have a, a big why, I think we should all have that in our lives. Um, as far as, say a person is looking to be healthy, um, there could be two different people. One person is, is kind of a, an overweight guy that's like, yeah, I know it's, it's good for my health. To, I need to I need to lose 20 pounds and, and get in better shape. Um, but he's you know pretty comfortable and, and he hasn't had any serious health issues at this point. Versus a guy that, that just came out of the hospital from surviving a heart attack. That's that's overweight and unhealthy. Um, he's going to have a lot bigger motivation to get his life straightened out and, and, and get in better shape because he he just experienced the near death experience. Um, so it's, it's important, I think, that we have a big why. And, and just talking this morning, think about that in your life. Why do you do what you do? Um, and yeah, what's, what's driving you to become better? <clears throat> so I'd like to, I read uh, 1 Corinthians 9, 24 to 27. I want to back up just a little bit and read a few of the other verses ahead of that. And this is, I think this is talking about Paul's why, why he's uh, wanting to be this one. I'm going to start at verse 19, and I'll just, I'll read back over and then down to 27. And then we'll, we'll talk about those, those verses a little bit. So verse 19, even though I am a free man with no master, I have become a slave to all people to bring many to Christ. When I was with the Jews, I lived like a Jew to bring the Jews to Christ. When I was with those who followed the Jewish law, I too lived under that law. Even though I am not subject to the law, I did this so I could bring to Christ those who are under the law. When I am with the Gentiles who do not follow the Jewish law, I too live apart from that law, so I can bring them to Christ. But I do not ignore the law of God, I obey the law of Christ. When I am with those who are weak, I share their weakness, for I want to bring weak, the weak to Christ. Yes, I try to find common ground with everyone, doing everything I can to save some. I do everything to spread the good, to spread the good news and share in its blessings. Don't you realize that in the race everyone runs, but only one person gets the prize? So run to win. All athletes are disciplined in their training. They do it to win a prize that will fade away, but we do it for an eternal prize. So I run with purpose in every step. I am not just shadow boxing. I discipline my body like an athlete, training to do what it should. Otherwise, I fear that after preaching to others, I myself might be disqualified. Okay, so so some of the some of these um, phrases in here I'd like to look into a little bit. So verse 23 um, says, 
just to just spread the good news and share his blessings. That's that's what Paul is is putting his energy into, and that's that's his why, and and that really should be all of our why. Um, why do we do the things we do, and what are we what are we here on this earth for? Um, and then verse down in, into verse twenty five. Um, yeah, it says we do it for an eternal prize. That's uh, we talked about that a little bit in Sunday school this morning. There's, there is a reward for good work in a sense in the kingdom of God, and um, I think I think that's a noble noble thing to work for. There's there's more things, but uh, that is a real thing. We should want to spend eternity with Christ and and receive that blessing. Um, verse 27. There's there's a few here. Um, Paul talks about he, he disciplines his body like an athlete. Um, and I, I just was doing a little bit of looking on some professional athletes and also <laughs> Olympic athletes, just just kind of their training schedule. Like they they don't have another job. Most of them, um, it's they they live near their training center and they're in their it just depends five to six hours a day training specifically, and then then there's specific meals that they eat and they go to bed at the same time every day. Um, there's different ice baths and massages and different things that, that they do to keep their their body in the best shape it can possibly be and to recover quickly from training so that they can get back at it the next day. Um, their whole life revolves around training for a certain event or a game or um, or whatever, and that's that's a pretty a pretty good challenge. Uh, is my discipline routine and my training for the kingdom of God like like an athlete trains or a soldier or or uh, yeah? Does your does your discipline regimen kind of meet up with that? Would an Olympic trainer be like, yeah, I'm gonna adopt your your uh, discipline regimen for for this guy to train and compete? Um, verse, verse 27, a little, a little farther in, it says, um, Paul talks about training his body to do what it should. Um, this kind of implies that, that there are two, at least, you know, two different parts of, some people would say maybe three, body, soul, spirit, but at least two different parts. There's the, there's our spiritual side, uh, that has a say over what our physical side does. Uh, our mind, spirit, whatever you want to call it, is in control of our physical body, and and our physical body should be a tool to accomplish accomplish different things. Because you can't necessarily accomplish things with your mind. Um, your mind has to set your body in motion to, to carry something out. Uh, so Paul says he, he trains his body to do what it should. Um, so uh, that's that's a good thought there. And then. Um, Paul then at the end he says, otherwise I fear that after preaching to others I myself might be disqualified, and and I think he had a healthy fear that that he realized, um, you know I I'm, I'm sold out for Christ, but I have the there's the possibility that I could fall away if I am not intentional, and and I think that's you know, if Paul if Paul said that. <laughs> I think, yeah, surely any of us would have to, it would be possible for us to fall away too if we are not um, intentional. So, so to have a healthy fear of that and, and to let that motivate us a little bit. Um, so yeah, now moving on a little bit to the how, some maybe practical applications. Um, this one is a choice, just like obedience, not, but not necessarily easy. Um, and, then, and one other thing I, I would like to say, uh, and it's maybe it's maybe a little bit the way I thought some in the past. Um, discipline is not good or bad in, in itself. Um, sometimes I've I've had the thought that you know, I'm, I'm struggling with a, a sin issue or something, and I'm just like, okay, if I if I can just have enough discipline, I can overcome this. And I think it's it's important to know that we can't overcome sin strictly through discipline. Um, it, it is the power of God. Um, but he has given us discipline as a way to train our bodies to 
to say no to different sins, to do good, to do different things. Um, I just want to make sure I'm not sending that message across that if we're disciplined enough, uh, we can overcome sin because we, we can't. Like it's it's impossible and it's it's through the power of God that he gives us victory over that. But he does give that us that discipline as a tool there. Um, so I, and I was trying to think, um, and this is a list that I came up with in like different ways that we can be disciplined. Um, and I was thinking pretty much it, it has to be something we've been given. Um, so the, the, the different ways, that just practical ways that we can be disciplined, there's, there's four things that I came up with. There might be more, but that's, that's what I came up with. Um, so our physical body, um, so what we do with our physical body, um, you know, how late we sleep, what time we get to bed, what we eat, what we see, what we listen to. Uh, those are those are different ways we can be disciplined with our physical body, um, our time. So we all have time. That's something that we can choose what to do with it. Um, and then our words, and that would kind of maybe overlap with our our physical body a little bit. But we have a choice of what we say, and we can use words to tear people down or build people up, make an impact in people's lives. And then also um, our money possessions, things that that we have that God has given to us. We have a choice on what we do with them, whether we use all of those things for ourselves or if we um, use those things to build the kingdom of God. So, um, and thinking of those four things, what are some examples for scripture, different situations or, or people that um, show, show the use of discipline in their lives? Which of those ways? Do I have any thoughts on that? Samaritan, uh, that would be that would be time and also his money and possessions. He he took the time to go care for this guy, and he also uh, took gave, gave him money to, to yeah help him be taken care of. Uh, Joseph with Potiphar's wife, um, he, he ex yeah he, he fled that temptation. He's like I, I'm out of here. Uh, he ran from it. Um, so, yeah, they, I, I feel like the, the Bible is full of them. Anytime there was a, a man of character or a woman of character to talk about, it's, it's because there was some, 
some discipline going on in their lives. Um, I have a list of references here that I would like to pass out, and y'all can uh, maybe maybe each take one. There's four or five, something like that. So the first one is 1 Corinthians 10, 12, and 13. 12 and 13. Okay, Everett got that one. Uncle Brian, if you would take uh, 1, the, 1 Thessalonians 5, 4 to 8. Um, and then Proverbs 16, 32. 16, 32. Angel, thank you. And then Proverbs 25, 28. 25, 28. Okay. 2 Timothy 1, 7. Okay, and then I'll read the last one is Hebrews 12, 11, 13. So just, just read them in that order, and I'll maybe make a little comment afterwards. Um, let's see, Everett, you had the first one. 1 Corinthians 10, 12, and 13. Wherefore, let him that taketh he standeth take heed, lest ye fall. There hath no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able. So temptation also makes a way to escape that you may be able to bear it. Okay. And just just there, God, again, he has the power to help us overcome sin. Um, but he's also, he's going to give us things that we can handle. He's not going to give us something that's, that's more than what we can handle with. Yeah. So, all right. And then 1 Thessalonians 5, 4 to 8. But ye, brethren, are not in darkness, that that day should overtake you as a thief. Ye are all of the children of the light and the children of the day. We are not of the night, nor of darkness. Therefore, let us not sleep as others do, as others do, but let us watch and be sober. For they that sleep, sleep in the night, and they that be drunken are drunken in the night. But let us who are of the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love, and for, the, for an helmet the hope of salvation. For God has not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ. Okay, and and just speaking there of of a lot of intentional living, I'm not just doing whatever our flesh feels like. It's it's an intentional look that's happening there. Okay, Proverbs sixteen thirty two. He that is slow to anger is better than the mighty. He that ruleth his spirit than he that taketh a city. Okay. And I think that, I think the King James uses ruling his spirit, and that would be um, self-control or, or self-discipline. Um, it's, it's better to do that than to, than to take a city is what it's saying. Okay? Proverbs 25, 28. He that hath no rule over his own spirit is like a city that is broken down and without walls. Okay? And there again, uh, ruling the spirit would be self-control. Um, yeah, a city that's broken down with a lot and, and without walls uh, seems like it's a good opportunity for, for Satan to work his way in. Uh, okay, 2 Timothy 1 7. For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Okay, um, that's, yeah, again, the sound, I think the sound mind is. Is, is translated a little different, different translations, but it's it's self control has the idea of, of being in control of your body, your mind being in control of your body. Uh, okay, and then Hebrews, I'll read Hebrews 12, 11 to 13. <clears throat> no discipline is enjoyable while it is happening. It's painful, but afterward there will be a peaceful harvest of right living for those who are trained in this way. So take a new grip with your tired hands and strengthen your weak knees. Mark out a straight path for your feet so that those who are weak and lame will not fall but become strong. Okay, um, just, just the idea there. Of, uh, <coughs> yeah, if you're, if you're feeling weak, if you're feeling undisciplined, whatever. Um, God, God has given us the power to be in control of of our bodies, and I believe he, he expects us to, um, to to take heart with that. Um, yeah, just what I what I want to the, the message I want to pass on. Discipline um, should be used to train our bodies to better serve Christ, to better be used of God. Um, I, I 
I think we do have to be careful that it's we don't become like, oh, I'm, I'm so disciplined. I start taking pride in that. And um, discipline is not anything of itself, really. Um, it's, it should be used as a tool to get us to a goal. And if we know what our goal is in life, um, it's a great tool to, to help us move toward that. Um, so that's the, that's the challenge I would like to leave with us this morning. Um, how is your... How's your life in your life? How is your discipline going? And I definitely am not speaking as somebody that has it all figured out because I, I definitely don't. I'm, I'm trying to grow and and get better and be more in tune with what God wants for me. Um, but I do I do believe it's something that God expects us to be um, to be intentional about. And and if we if we are, if we're maximizing the use of our time and our resources, our body, um, God's gonna be able to, God's gonna be able to work through that a lot easier than a, than a just completely undisciplined person. So um, that's that's my challenge. Think of ways. What is my weakness? What is I think all of us probably have natural strengths and weaknesses. What are the weaknesses, and how can I improve on those to better serve Christ? So, um, with that, let's let's have a word of prayer. Father, thank you for your word and your um, yeah, just the, the things that we can learn from your word, examples in Scripture. Lord, I ask that you would help us as we um, just seek to follow you better and uh, grow. Help us to look for ways that we're weak that. You could better use us if we, uh, if we got stronger in or uh, just help us to be intentional. And, and most of all, that you can just shape our lives to um, be about your business and, and fulfill your work for us here in this earth. Would we commit the rest of our day here to you in Jesus' name?